Hello, hi everybody. It's very nice to see you here. So we have one minute left till they're till our going live. So just let's wait for a few seconds and we can get started. Okay, so it's 10, 10 a.m. Pacific time, so we are ready to start. So it's very nice to see all you here today. So my name is Nick Smirnov, I'm CEO at Hystex, and our topic for this session is live migration from private clouds to public clouds. We have two speakers today, Max Bozenka, who is our CTO, and our main presenter, Yulia Rindenkova, Director of Engineering. So their agenda for this session is the following. So we'll start with a live demo and have a Q&A session at the end. Please feel free to send uh, your questions. If you have any, type in them directly into a dedicated module. Yulia, please get started. OK, thanks, Nick. Hi, so um, the subject of our today's webinar, as Nick mentioned, is a cloud migration from private to public clouds. And I will do a live demo of um, migration of uh, VMware uh, machine to Azure. Uh, a couple of words about our platform, about our solution. Uh, so we support, uh, as you can see, a lot of source, source platforms and target platforms. Um, starting from VMware hypervisor and AWS and then with Alibaba, GCP and so on. Uh, we also do support um, bare metal machines and um, uh, migrating them to uh, any target platform that you can see to the uh, right. Uh, a couple of words about the solution in general. Um, our solution uh, uh, several uh, advantages of our solution, first of all. Uh, the first one is uh, live background replication to a target site. And uh, it means that our, our solution doesn't have any impact on the uh, production running. And um, all the processes, uh, replication processes are actually going in background. Uh, the second one is agentless uh, migration with external agent and no data loss. Um, we uh, have not only internal agents, we do have an external one uh, for VMware, and it works on a hypervisor level, um, provide an ability to replicate all the machines and detect all the machines uh, on the host where it's installed. And um, Saying, about, uh, saying a couple of words about no data loss, we um, provide our customers with uh, um, consistent replications. Um, we do it for, um, for all the platforms uh, that we support. For uh, Windows agent, the, the replication uses uh, regular uh, VSS. Uh, regular Windows faces to create snapshots, and uh, so we flush uh, all the data and get uh, their, cons their consistency. As for the Linux part, the Linux driver, uh, the Linux sorry, agent, uh, we have our own um, driver that's running uh, uh, inside uh, the VM, and um, doing some kind uh, of uh, the job that uh, VSS actually do. So uh, that's how we do um, also consistent replications for Linux. And as for VMware, we use uh, VMware API, uh, CBT API to get the changes and uh, to get consistent uh, state of uh, their machine. The third point is uh, that no downtime is uh, necessary while replicating on testing migrations. That's also because our uh, solution, it runs in background, the replication processes, they, uh, they're running in background. And um, as far as we replicate uh, the whole machines, uh, they can be started in the target site in some isolated network. There is no impact um, to, the, to the source environment. Um, and the last point, but not uh, 
not least not not, not uh, uh, also so important. Um, we provide unlimited uh, number of test migrations and no disruption. It means that uh, our customers may do as many test migrations as they want. They may run uh, as many rep replications as they want to actually make sure that they are ready to uh, to do a cutover to uh, to migrate the machine to finalize the process. And um, so um, the demo for today is uh, to migrate a VM from VMware to um, to Microsoft Azure Cloud. That's the uh, demo use case that we're having today. As and as Nick mentioned, uh, a couple of words about agenda. I'm going to make Delta on a VM uh, to create a file with uh, current daytime and uh, uh, run incremental replication. After then, spin up a VM on Azure and check consistency that the file is actually there and finally execute a cutover. So um, I have a VM, uh, it's uh, Windows Server 2012 R2. And current time here is uh, 10, uh, 10 a.m., um, five minutes. So I'm gonna create a, a text file and name it like live demo, live, live demo txt, and put the time, date and time here. So it's Edit Wednesday and 10 or 6 a.m. Save so the file. Okay, the file is here, the data is here, and I'm ready to start new application. Here is the main interface of the solution. Here with here is what customer what what a customer sees. When he logs in, here is the machine that I will be replicating. I already have uh, my initial snapshot, uh, my initial replication. So uh, the next thing I will do, I will start a new replication for this machine. And uh, to uh, to get the delta. So uh, a couple of words uh, what's going on uh, right now uh, with the machine. So. When I when I clicked uh, start replication, the solution itself it's sending uh, like a task to uh, to the replication agent that's running inside this machine as a uh, regular service, uh, regular service, uh, regular Windows service. Oh, sorry, I need services here. Services, yeah. So it's running as a regular service uh, in the Windows machine. And this service is getting a task from, um, from Acura that um, a new replication must take place. Uh, the service is named High Stacks Windows Replication Agent. And the service um, is, uh, uh, the service starts to create a VSS snapshot to get the deltas uh, between uh, replications because uh, during the first initial replication we send um, all the data from the machine but during uh, incremental replications we send only deltas um, there is a um, basis tracker running inside uh, our agent um, that uh, helps us to get these deltas uh, very quickly uh, yeah, while I was talking, the replication actually actually uh, almost is almost done. Um, so uh, when uh, the the snapshot and the deltas is uh, are ready from the uh, source side, uh, from the target side, uh, we use a service VM VM that is um, that is called a cloud agent. And uh, this VM actually writes data to the storage. It attaches a uh, disk uh, in the case of Azure and writes data to this disk. Um, the machine is synced. So um, the next thing to do is to, to check or to create a migration plan. I have already one created. It's like a description of uh, the machine, how uh, it will be started in um, the target side 
what um, what flavor it will use, what subnet it will run in, and so on and so forth. So forth. Um, uh, two modes that we uh, provide for our customers: uh, basic uh, mode that's uh, more like user-friendly um, interface with buttons and so on, and expert mod is um, a simple JSON format where you can. Uh, type uh, some additional parameters, for example, floating IP usages and so on. Uh, the, uh, the, the immigration plan from my side is ready. I've prepared it uh, beforehand. And to actually start the immigration process and to get the machine running in the target site, I just need to select it and click Run Migration. And uh, I, I go direct, I goes directly to, I go directly to and the uh, wizard to the immigration wizard where I can uh, just make sure that everything is set, all the machines that I need it are in this uh, in this plan and click next. Um, again, to check the list of machines that um, all the flavors, ranks, subnets, everything is set correctly, um, set any cloud site name, um, demo cloud site, demo cloud site like this. Yeah, and set snapshot time. And by default, snapshot time it's uh, current date and time. Uh, but uh, in general, um, we do not, as, as you could uh, see, we uh, don't provide an ability to set a specific snapshot time for each of the machine, and that's done for purpose. Um, for example, if we had like 100 machines, uh, it would be impossible to set a, a snapshot time for each of uh, the machine. So um, the user, the customer, is just uh, selects uh, or sets some uh, snapshot time, and the closest uh, time in the past for each of the machine will be used. So uh, this way, we provide uh, for our uh, users more convenient interface. Uh, everything is set, and I'm ready to start a machine in the, in the cloud side. Of course, it will take some time for the machine to uh, to boot. And uh, while it's booting, I will say a couple of words how the solution work, um, you know, how the solution works in general. Here is the, the flow, migration data flow. Uh, we have source environment. In my case, it was Windows machine, but it can be a Windows Linux uh, machine or in case of an external agent VMware that we support. And um, a replication agent, it reads the data from uh, the source machine and sends it directly to uh, the target cloud where our solution as X Acre is running. Uh, the solution itself is um, a set of Docker containers that are managed by Kubernetes. And um, uh, each of uh, the containers has its own purpose. Uh, for example, here you can see like only several of them. Uh, the receiver it uh, gets the data from the replication agents and sends it to the cloud agent that's running in the target cloud, and writes data directly to um, to the disks in Azure. Uh, once their replication is done and all the data is sent, we do snapshots on um, on the uh, volumes on disks, and this way we provide an ability to use some uh, particular snapshot uh, for the machine to boot from. Uh, what happens during the uh, failover process, we uh, use a specified snapshot that the, the, uh, the user specified, like the closest in the past time. And we create a volume from this snapshot and uh, do P2V, do PV2V, we do partitioning, and then we just boot the machine, that's it. So that's why the process um, is pretty quick and it actually takes uh, the, the time um, is taken only for the machine to boot. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, everything must be already running. Let me check. It's still, it's still okay. It's still booting, I suppose. Yeah, it's still booting. Um, so a couple of words about this page. Um, that's the cloud site page uh, and um, uh, the list of machines. Uh, the machine started. 
Great. So the list of machines will, uh, are displayed right over here with all the IP addresses that they have, like floating IPs, uh, some internal IPs, flavors, so subnets with the subnet that I specified, snapshot that it would have come, and the status of the machine uh, in the cloud. The machine is running, so I'm going to, to get the RDP file for this machine and to connect to it. That's that's my machine. And I want to connect it. Okay. Ah, okay, yeah. Uh, I think that it's too early for me to connect because the Windows itself is still booting. Yeah, so the machine is running. The instance from the Azure side is running, but uh, as for the system itself, it's booting. Yeah, I will wait for for another minute and retry. Space is running here. Okay, so while the system is booting, um, a couple of words about uh, uh, Rail Over, how to make a machine independent um, from from Acro, and uh, uh, there is that attach button right over here. It's orange. Um, paying attention, paying a customer, uh, making a customer to pay attention to it, and. Um, all the machines from this cloud side can be uh, detached from Acre and um, with this way um, be uh, become independ independent. Uh, simply clicking that detach button, uh, I will do it a little bit later. Uh, the machines becomes uh, actually migrated to the target cloud, and no information about this uh, machine running in the cloud uh, will be an Acre. Let me check again the. RDP itself. Something's okay. Let me try to refresh it and check that I have. IP right over here. Not everything. Okay, that's my IP. Julia, while we have the machine booting, can you please respond to your, uh, one of the questions we got from the audience? Yep. Our, sure. Yeah, so one of, one of the questions we have, are, I think you partially covered that already. So uh, do we support uh, migration from bare metal to public cloud? Yeah, we do, yeah, we do support it. Uh, uh, for bare metal machines, they must be internal agents uh, installed directly to the system, either for Linux or for Windows. And uh, these agents, they uh, detect machines and save and send the data to uh, to any target cloud. Okay, so it's, it's basically we do support like yeah. practically any to any, so we can we can replicate from bare metal, from VMware, Hyper V from public clouds, Amazon to Azure, to GCP, to Alibaba, whatever. So yeah, our, yeah, thank you very much. So uh, one, of, one of our attendees, Joy, is asking regarding their machine currently running, whether we have all the ports open, or, so it's not, not a port issue, yeah? Yeah, it shouldn't be. OK. So I <laughs> actually, I <laughs> tried to do it like 10 minutes before the demo, <laughs> so that's why it's <laughs> yeah, let's try it maybe to download it once again. So I think yeah. it could, like it gets stuck in, in the booting mode. So maybe, yeah. maybe I and yeah, you can see that yeah. there's already some traffic there, so it should be fine now. Yeah. 
Yes, if I show them, I do have this file. Okay, the ports, the ports must be open because I'm already yeah. <laughs> Another question for from audience, uh, from Joe again. Uh, what is the pre-request for restoring back to bare metal? So, uh, uh, to restore back to bare metal, uh, this case is applicable for disaster recovery uh, uh, using our pro products uh, with uh, uh, failback feature and for to, to perform restoring uh, your failover machines for back to the bare metal, we do have uh, the uh, bare metal recovery uh, service. Uh, so this is a, a sort of uh, a model that's, uh, that, that should be downloaded to the bare metal machine and then it will uh, dump uh, the states, the, the data state from the failover side back to the uh, to, to this bare metal machine to, yeah, to, to perform uh, failback. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Max. Yeah, Yulia, please go on. Yeah, so actually uh, no port problems, just it took too much time for for the machine itself to boot. Here is the file live demo that we created in the beginning of this meeting with the time that we typed in. Everything, um, everything is done from the purpose of this demo. So um, if you have any further questions, suppose Nick can read them. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Yulia. Thank you for, for the demo. So now we are ready to move to the Q&A session. So we we just responded a few questions and we have we had a few remaining. Our, so another question, the operating system installation has to be prepared in the bare metal restore. Uh, for the bare metal, metal restore, uh, it, to, in order to start the bare metal uh, uh, restore agent on that uh, on that server, you you, you will need to uh, install fresh uh, uh, fresh Ubuntu uh, Linux uh, because uh, the the bare uh, BMR agent uh, should be uh, uh, running on the top of the Linux machine. But uh, you uh, of course you can you can restore. Uh, the Windows machines, uh, as well as Linux machines, to the, that uh, server. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I hope we responded to the question. So, our uh, another question we have are uh, how how do we ensure that uh, my application can be migrated to AU? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, the uh, our migration process. Uh, when you do perform the migration, is a iterative thing. So uh, after the uh, initial replication, you will be able to run a copy of your workload that you are going to migrate to, to another cloud uh, for a test migration se session where you can. Uh, uh, check how your application is running on the target cloud with, with, with a yeah, new hypervisor, new instance. Uh, uh, maybe you you will need to adjust the flavoring, adjust the networking, and so on. So uh, during this these test uh, migration sessions, you gain the confidence that your uh, your uh, application will uh, application is is uh, ready to be. Uh, uh, fully migrated to, to the uh, to the to the new location. So after that, you just uh, plan your final cutover session and uh, yeah, perform the actual migration. Okay, okay, thank you, Max. Our uh, looks like that's it for for the questions. Uh, so if there are no questions, so I think we are we are done for today. So thank you very much for for your time. Thank you for joining. Uh, and we'll be happy to see you soon on our next webinar, which would be in, in just in two weeks on May 6th. We'll talk about how we can help companies uh, uh, to reduce their cloud bill. So we'll talk about some cost optimization scenarios, how we how you can keep your cloud bill under control, uh, and how you can optimize that. So thank you very much for, for your time once again. Have a nice day and stay safe. We are we are good for today, I think. And yeah, just we have one final question. So, uh, does Acura support Mail Exchange Server as well as Linux Mail Live migration? 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. The uh, the mig our migration uh, solution is uh, basically it's uh, application agnostic. So we replicate and migrate machines uh, as, as a whole uh, instance with the uh, operating system with uh, with all applications inside it. So the uh, Exchange server, uh, uh, which resides on the Windows, I believe. Uh, in your case, in your case, uh, it's totally supported. And uh, the second part of the uh, of the question is regarding the uh, Linux mail, mail live migration. So, uh, I should. I, uh, so the we we can migrate the Linux hosts, uh, the Ubuntu, Red Hat, CentOS, uh, uh, Debian, the Linux uh, are supported. So if you're uh, mail system is based on uh, resides on on one of these uh, operating systems. It's totally possible to migrate them to to the cloud. Uh, another one: uh, Is it possible to migrate containers with, the, with this tool, for example, from from uh, cloud vendor uh, from one cloud vendor to another? Uh, well, current uh, the current tool, uh, the current stage of uh, development. We uh, in the current stage of development, we support. Uh, 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 virtual machines and uh, bare metal machines uh, migration between the clouds. Uh, the con continuous mi migration, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's on roadmap and we'll, uh, we'll keep you informed uh, about the, its availability. Now we are running uh, the internal test of, of uh, uh, in initial implementation for that. So, so we'll keep you updated through our uh, websites uh, about the progress. Yeah, it's 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 a brilliant question, by the way. So it's it's in our roadmap where you have some very nice and solid POCs so when we can migrate from different flavors of Kubernetes. We already have some some scenarios where we can migrate from our like our vanilla Kubernetes or Google Anthos to Red Hat OpenShift and other Kubernetes scenarios, but. This would come very soon. I think uh, some some version would be available early next year. So it's already under our implementation. It's a part of our new product. We'll be releasing very soon. So it's in our roadmap, and we already have uh, enough ammunition to support it in our product. Okay. So it looks like that's it. So thank you once again. Thank you for for staying with us or for this time, stay safe and we'll be happy to see you soon in our next webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye.